We would like to welcome you to our Remembrance Day Assembly. Let us first start by acknowledging that we are on Treaty 8 territory, the traditional lands of the Cree, Dene, Beaver, and Métis peoples. We are dedicated to ensuring that Treaty 8 is honored and respected. Today, we gather to honor all our war veterans that kept our country safe and to all the Aboriginal men that fought for their country. Now, I'm going to say it in Cree and in English. Ximantu, Sawimik, Kakio, Napiwa, Ngoskiwag, Uti, Apagitin Sota, Kataski Naogiche, and Anaskuma Nanak. Creator, bless our grandfathers and our grandmothers. We honor them today for they have made their sacrifices to keep us safe in our country. Without their sacrifices, we would not have the life we have today. Hi, hi, Nanaskuman. And we are very grateful. The 11th day of the 11th month. This is Remembrance Day in Canada. We gather in more than 2,000 cities, towns, and villages throughout Canada. We stand with our hats off, our heads bowed, and we wear a poppy. We participate in a simple but very moving ceremony to honor the many Canadian service personnel who have died in war and in other missions throughout the world. Canadians remember those who paid the supreme sacrifice in many ways. But what should the Remembrance Day ceremony mean to you today? Perhaps the most important thing to remember is that many of those who were killed were not much older than our high school students. Some of these men and women left high school and university classes to fly warplanes while still in their teens. Others stormed the beaches of Sicily, Italy, and France, or fought in the Battle of the Atlantic in tiny warships known as corvettes. Many of them did not reach the age of 21 before they were killed in action, but their plans for the future were as bright as yours today. They left the excitement and the promise of graduation, of sharing more good times at home with friends to serve. The Royal Canadian Legion encourages all Canadians to observe a moment of silence on November 11th to mark the sacrifice of the many who have fallen in the service of their country and to acknowledge the courage of those who still serve. Thousands of Indigenous people served in the Canadian military forces in the First World War and Second World War, mostly voluntarily. On the home front, most Aboriginal communities participate in the national war effort in diverse ways. We would like to honour all the code talkers. Did you know that Indigenous peoples were not allowed to enlist until 1915? About one third of First Nations peoples in Canada aged 18 to 45 enlisted during World War I. Métis and Inuit soldiers also enlisted. Many Indigenous peoples distinguished themselves as talented and capable soldiers, and at least 50 were awarded medals for bravery and heroism. That was until 1995, Indigenous peoples were not allowed to lay a wreath at the National War Memorial. The Indigenous Veterans Day was founded in Winnipeg in 1994 as a direct result of the etiquette under the Indian Act. By remembering their service and their sacrifice, we recognize the tradition of freedom these men and women fought to preserve. They believe that their actions in the present would make a significant difference for the future, but it is up to us to ensure that their dream of peace is realized. On Remembrance Day, we acknowledge the courage and sacrifice of those who serve their country and acknowledge our responsibility to work for the peace they fought hard to achieve.
The poem in Flanders Field was written by a Canadian Lieutenant, Colonel John McRae, more than 100 years ago, on May 3, 1915. He was a doctor treating wounded soldiers during the Second Battle of Ypres in Belgium during World War I. In this area of southern Belgium and northern France, the battlefield where the fighting took place was called Flanders Field. A close friend of McRae's, Alexis Helmer, was killed during the fighting. He was so upset by the loss of his friend and all the other soldiers who were killed. He was inspired to write down his thoughts after burying his friend. When Officer McRae sat down on the back of an ambulance, he looked across the field of small white crosses where they had buried the dead. McRae noticed that bright red poppies were still growing amongst the white grave markers. The fields were muddy and worn from the fighting that was still going on, but the flowers continued to bloom. His poem describes these poppies, the crosses, the sounds of gun shooting, and these dead soldiers. The poem talks about bravery, loss, hope, and the promise of future victory, especially if those people still living continue to fight for those who have died trying. Officer McRae's poem has become the most well-known war poem ever written, and it is read at countless war memorial day ceremonies around the world. McRae died from pneumonia in 1918, just three years after he wrote the poem, at the age of 45 in France. He never knew how important his poem would become. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely sing and fly, scars heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields, take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. Though poppies grow in Flanders fields. In 1918, after World War I, upon reading his poem in a magazine, an American woman named Moina Michael got the idea of wearing a red poppy as a symbol of remembrance for the men who served in the war. She worked very hard every year trying to get others to wear a poppy in November to show that they remembered the ones who fought in war. While Moina was thinking about the importance of the poppy in the United States, so was another woman in France named Madame Guerin. She also encouraged the idea of selling silk poppies to others to wear and using the money that they raised to help veterans. Soon other countries such as Canada, Great Britain, New Zealand, and Australia began to accept the poppy as a symbol of remembrance every year. Although Lieutenant Colonel John McRae could not help save his friend and others who have died during that great war so many years ago, his poem continues to remind us about the loss of lives during wartime. When you wear a poppy, think of them.
No matter how and when we participate in remembering the soldiers, one of the salient purposes and permanent reasons of our remembrance is lest we forget. Forgetting the past is by default part of an acceptable phenomenon to us, but there are certain things we retain in our memories and knowledge, such as significant moments and events, as well as honorable people and their acts in history. Reflecting the values of our community as a whole, we remember them with respect and honor. For the past, present, and future, we will remember them for their dedication. We will remember them for their courage. We will remember them for their sacrifice for our lives. We will remember them. Back in the 1700s and 1800s, when battles were fought soldier against soldier on land, there was an officer in charge of the duties of the soldiers for the day called a duty officer. The duty officer walked around the area where the soldiers were fighting, inspecting their different areas known as posts. A musician who played the bugle, which is like a trumpet, followed him around, and as the officer inspected each area or post, the bugler would play some music to signify that they had inspected that post and they were moving to another one. When the duty officer first started out in the morning, the bugler would play a song called Reveille, which means wake up in French. At the end of the day, when the duty officer was finished making the rounds of all the different posts and he was finished for the day, the bugler played a piece of music called the lost post to signify that they had inspected the final area. The bugle calls were played throughout the day as a way for the soldiers to keep track of time as they were doing their various duties. Sometimes when they heard the call, they were to switch duties. Perhaps it was their turn to stop fighting and enjoy a meal or to do some other military activities such as exercising. Maybe it was their turn to relax and write a letter home or their turn to sleep. When the soldiers heard the last post music being played, it signaled to the men who were on night watch to be alert and the other soldiers had a final warning before it became dark out. When wars became larger and fighting was no longer just taking place on the land, the role of the bugler changed. During the Great War, World War I, in the early 1900s, men were being sent to fight in boats, traveling across the ocean to different countries. The military's use of radios improved communication between different posts, so the bugler was no longer needed to follow around a duty officer. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now. I see T'was grace that taught My heart to fear And grace my fears relieved How precious did That grace appear yeah, I first believed Through many dangers, toils and snares I have already come Tis grace hath brought me safe this far and grace will lead me home and grace will lead me
And we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. We know the days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now. Was one, but now I see. But music can be so significant and meaningful. The military decided to begin a new tradition of having the notes of the last post played at the gravesite of those who died in battle. Men would gather around where they had just buried their fellow officers and a bugler would play the music. These notes played at an officer's funeral no longer signaled the end of a day in battle, but also the end of a soldier's life. When a war was over, countries that lost so many men during a great war built memorial statues and monuments. On the memorials, the government listed the names of all the people who served in the war and died. When the monument was unveiled for everyone to see and remember, the last post music was played followed by a moment of silence so people could take a minute to silently remember their loved ones who fought and died for their country. The tradition continues. Every year we gather together and remember those who fought and died for their country. The music that was once used to signify the end of a soldier's day so long ago is now heard as a reminder of so many who died while fighting for their country. When the last post is played, we listen respectfully and thoughtfully and think about how long ago, and even today, people died so that we may live freely.
As we stand here in peace and safety, we pay our respects to all of the fallen, all of the wounded, and all who served in conflicts over the last 100 years. Today, as we should every day, we remember those who volunteered, sacrificed, served, fought, and died for our freedom. We thank them and we salute them as we salute those who made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. We will never forget them. Nous nous souvenons. We will remember. Thank you for taking part in our Remembrance Day ceremony.